The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Hi, this is Ken Gidge, and this is The Art of Politics, and this is the only show that has a good Republican, supposedly, and a great Democrat, which is obviously myself. Uh, we're here in Nashua, and I'm Ken Gidge, and this is my partner, Hello, Bill O'Brien. How are you today? And how are you doing? Not too bad. Um, it's great to be on the show. You know, we have a pretty good audience out there, as you know, Ken, a number of different towns that we are broadcast in, and I was yep. just thinking about them as we started off. Um, let's see if I can remember them all. I think there was, we're in Amherst, Claremont, Nashua, of course, Wolfboro, Andover, and Londonderry, I believe. Ah, Amherst. Did you say Amherst? I did say Amherst. Oh, okay. I, I did, because that's actually the next town over to where I live in Mount Vernon. And as we explain to the folks in Amherst all the time, we're kind of up in the hill, and we watch them up there. And yeah, we we <laughs> we, uh, we picked up another station, so we're on basically five right now, uh, counting ourselves. So uh, we're going to try to pick up a whole bunch. I mean, we're coming into a political season. Yeah. You are, and let's make sure everybody understands this. You are running for Congress. I am. I am. And why don't we get that out of the way, and so I can plug Andy Custer. And, well, you know, we've had uh, already some uh, folks who are here and may have some presidential aspirations. You know, uh, I was at a fundraiser, gee, I think about three weeks ago, and Governor Bobby Jindal from Louisiana was there. Oh, well, it's, it's, yeah, and, as if he's uh, going to... We had uh, Senator Rand Paul from Kentucky at another fundraiser. My God, you, that's all disgusting. Uh, are, are they not, Rand you're Paul. Not, you're not going to vote for them, Ken? No. Uh, no. Oh, not in the primary, but in the general, you will. I mean, never. Um, Rand Paul, he's a. Oh, my, my, my sense is that Dennis Kucinich is not going to be running no, this time, I, and therefore your candidate is, is not going to be here, Ken. So you'll have to move no, on. No, but you know, you got one thing. One you must say about Dennis. Actually, I, I must say nothing about Dennis. <laughs> it's probably best. He's probably married to one of the most beautiful women in the world. I'm not sure. If People know that. I mean, I'm he, gonna, I guess, gonna, is a I'm real... Gonna leave, I'm going to leave that line. Yeah, well, no, it's a, and, and I meant that really nice, but that's about it. As far as I was not happy with him and Rand Paul, how can anyone? I mean, this, this man, say something good about him. He's a physician who has saved lives. Is that not good enough? I know, and then he becomes a politician to ruin lives. Yeah, but that's you and I, you know. It's... I know. So anyway, you're running for Congress. Why don't you give out your your? I'll do that. You know, we've we've put up a, a small website just to get things going here. Um, it's O'Brien for Congress and uh, O'Brienforcongress.com, and so you can go on there and and sign up, get some email updates, and and uh, over time we will be getting content in there, various pages and the things that you put into a website to show where we are and and um, how the campaign is moving forward. Good. And I, I really want to make this really clear to also everyone. I am a Democrat, and as a Democrat, I will be voting for and working for Annie Custer. And now uh, my partner over here will be running against her. So I thought what we would do is if every time this comes up, we will balance it off that way. I do not want you to leave the show. 
I want this show to continue going. I don't want people to say, well, he's running for Congress, and guess what? He's getting free publicity. Well, Annie Cuffs is, is a lot, obviously. Come on anytime she wants to. Uh, and so that's the way I think, and uh, we could be wrong, but that's the way I feel. You're running for Congress. Uh, you're here. Annie Cuffs is running for Congress, and I will be working with her. So. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. So we got some things going on in, in the state. Um, you know, last night you and I were together at the Hillsborough County Convention. And, you know, I bet most people are certainly like I was when I first became a state representative. They're not aware that county government has, each county has its own legislature. We call Correct. it, we have it, we call it the county convention or the county delegation. Right. We use, the statutes use the terms interchangeably. And what it is basically, is the um, state representatives who live within that county are the legislature for that county, and they meet in, as a delegation in a convention. And one of the principal things they do is vote the budget in, and that's what we did last night in uh, Hillsborough County. And let's, let us make this really clear, because I did mention it to you, and you mentioned it to me, is this was a very important meeting, and both sides, Republicans and Democrats, they all didn't show up. No, you know, the final vote on the budget, and the budget did pass, was 48 to 32, I think. And so doing some quick math, that's 80, 80 members were there to vote on it. And there's roughly 120 members Correct. of the uh, Hillsborough County delegation in the State House, 120 representatives who live in Hills Hillsborough County. And um, so, you know, a third weren't there, I guess, almost that, precisely. That, that's, and, and you know... We've gone over the politics, but I think people may be realizing what we're talking about. There is two governments. We're, we basically have two governments. Right. And we, every county has, has a, a delegation, and it's set up, and we go over budgets, county budgets, et cetera. We've got jails, and we have a nursing home, uh, lots of things that we, that we get from the state, a certain amount of money, and we use it, and we try to save it. And we, and we can also... Uh, charge taxes for people, ourselves. We, we do. Our, the county is paid principally in terms of taxes out of the property tax. And so um, just like a town or city, we establish a budget. I believe that the budgetary amount goes up to the uh, Department of Revenue Administration of the state, and then they send down to the towns how much money, and, and cities, how much money they have to collect for the county in order to, to cover those budgets. But, you know, going back to the folks that aren't there, in part it is, it is a function of who we are as a citizen legislature. And I think that's one of the things that people don't quite understand. You know, when I would go around the country as a speaker and I'd talk to them about how our house is run and I'd talk to them about in any session day, probably about 10%, I would say, of the folks don't show up, 400 members, probably a good 30, 40, sometimes more, aren't there at all. People come and go based on what their needs are. And, um, but good 10%. But, but you know, in, in part that's because we elect people who have jobs, um, you know, who have, to, who have family responsibilities. Correct. You know, if, if um, uh, a, a spouse, for example, with child care responsibilities comes Correct. into the legislature, it's not like we're paying, you know, 30 or 40 or 80,000 a year. No. They can't, it, it, there's no money there to hire child care for them so and in that's, part, that's, that, that's, an inter that's an interesting concept about child care some things like that maybe uh, I could see uh, because it, it is impossible it, it right. to, for them to bring the children up and we're there for four or five hours we have plenty of room basically uh, there's plenty of room around the, the state house and the office building well in the state house complex it is yeah, across the street park streets on one side as you face the yeah. state house on the right side on the left side is um, a state building. There's actually space in that building. Oh, I sure. mean, I looked at it at one point to see if we could set up offices for state representatives ah. in, in there. Um, ah, so good. To, you know, so put some computers in there, give, give a little bit more yes. work space. Yes. Um, so there is, there is a possibility of that, but it you know, costs money, and, and uh, you know, folks don't particularly like a legislature that's spending a lot of money. I understand that for their own operation. Um, so. You know, we, we looked at it, and I think that we have to look at it real closely in the upcoming years. Well, 10% not coming up, probably, I don't know what the national average is, but we're 400. Okay, so 
but a percentage like last night. Now, we're the majority, the re Democrats. Republicans almost took some of the things. I mean, that should not happen. We, and if your people yeah. would have been there, you would have. Well, I mean, I remember one vote, and I can't remember what motion was on, was specifically what it was intended to do. I think this, the difference was like three votes. You know, three votes is two members could change their, their votes, and that would, that would change the result of that motion. Um, it's, it's just as folks, I think, are beginning to realize, they certainly realize in New Hampshire with the, these many races we have in small districts where you have races that are decided by a handful of votes, and we invariably have ties. Um, they, they come up um, in every yeah. cycle. Um, every person Literally. Goes, yeah, yeah, they do. I mean, you know, they've had you know, ties that sometimes go away on a recount, ties that are sometimes established on a recount where, you know, in the end you have to literally flip a coin, I think is what they Can do. Can you imagine? Uh, I know a Rose from Nashua had, I think he won by once, once, and by one, and one by six. Yeah. yeah. And so... Uh, so that's Landslide Rose. That's yeah, one. yeah. Uh, I think this is his last term, like mine. But right. uh, <laughs> but w no, I think pe I think we're, we're kind of I think a little probably not upset. But look, you guys are the minority. We are the majority, and we did not show up. And your people, if they would have showed up, would have been there. Would have made the difference. Yeah, no, I think it was pretty much ecumenical there, wasn't it? I think you know one side showed up in overwhelming numbers, or didn't show up in overwhelming numbers. You should show just, up for all these, but yeah. last night was the one. To be there right. for. Right. Well, we're voting in the budget for the upcoming year, so it was an important. We had that a long time. It was. It was what time? Six o'clock. I think we started the meeting a little bit afterwards. And when did we get out of there? Nine o'clock or so. Nine, a little, little after about and, ten. And past I, th I think for being kind of a warm evening, it certainly was warm in there in the room. It was up in Gosstown at the county um, building up there. I think it was warm, and I, but I think people actually handled themselves pretty well. It was a very respectful debate. A little testy at times, but, but not bad. Well, I parked myself next to an air conditioner. You probably saw you did, too, I believe. I, I was, was right next to, to it. Well, I tried to get over there at one point. You and Dave Campbell were just, like, holding um, forth there, literally. And, and uh, you know, did you tell me to go away, or was it just body no, language? No, 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 no. I didn't tell language. you. No, don't, don't, don't look at me. Um, but uh, anyway, I thought that was something that, that we should let people know uh, about the... the you know, uh, we do have so, sort of like two governments within, and it's really necessary for people to participate in both, especially last night. And uh, I am giving Democrats hell. You should have been there. And I'm sure, in your way, you're saying Republicans, we could have won some. Well, I mean, obviously those conversations would take place. Is it, You know, folks, good folks, and I'm sure if they, most yeah. of them, if they couldn't have been there, there must have been something going on. But... You know, there was, a, there was a pretty good notice of it, you know. Oh, yeah. I remember oh, yeah. receiving notices yeah. Yeah. over the last yeah. several weeks that this is the ti time, this is the night. So it would have been helpful. And, and if they had been there, if the Republicans had been there en masse, we would not have had a budget that was passed with an increase that is three and a half times the rate of inflation. Did you know that? I mean, it didn't come out in the debate last night because um, the big government folks were on a roll. But, but um, the... Rate of inflation in May, according to the federal government, was 1.3%, 1.33% on an annualized basis. The budget increase was almost 5, 4.8%. It's three and a half times the rate Jeez, of inflation. And let, let me see. And the reason probably would be because of last year and the year before how you guys just said, we're going to save you so much money that us here in Nashua ended up spending more money to make up for what you guys up there, because you were the supermajority, and now you can turn around and say, hey, look, look how bad you guys are. That's the theory, of course. It's not the reality, but it's the theory. Um, and and uh, what the reality is, is that, that uh, three and a half times the rate of inflation, but you know, it's, it's a problem when you're in the minority. All you can do is just respectfully state your opposition yes, and, it, it, and, and log in your 32 votes versus 48 uh, votes and, and uh, then go back to the people uh, and, and talk wait, about wait, it. Wait, wait a minute. We, we, I want to definitely show everyone. This is uh, Jobs, Medicaid. Uh, Medicaid. Uh, now, I like people to, because we, we're going to sign a, a budget next week. 
Yeah, so we're, we're, we have the budget up in the House and the Senate on Wednesday. We both, uh, well, is there session day Wednesday? I can't remember. We're, our session day is Wednesday. Yes. And, and uh, the budget is going to be brought forward that they just finished negotiating this uh, past week. Uh, and Medicare, we're going to study. Medicaid. Medicaid. We're Medi Medicare is a federal program. No, program. I, I understand. We're no, no, you, you guys are always trying to scare the old folks. Don't scare them. We're not doing anything with Medicare. Well, I don't have to scare anyone. I mean, uh, Medicaid uh, is, uh, we can put 58,000 people more on this. No, 61% what, what, of them are women, and I think the Republicans no, have no, a what, hard time. What, what we can do by... Now, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. And if we would have done this and started this, uh, or had the date to start it, uh, Again, 58,000, not right away, but over a short period of time. But by not doing it, we lose a million dollars a day because it's 340 million a year we get for this. Sure. So if it's, it's about $800,000 a day that we lose, plus people don't have insurance. And one other thing. You ready, Ken? No, I'm not. No, no. Okay, you tell me when you're ready. Cause we, <laughs> All right, I think this we is should. A, this uh, is a target rich environment here that you're, All right, you're okay. laying out. I, got, I have more here, <laughs> well, but I just can't let's, find it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's talk about that. 58,000 new folks coming on Medicaid, and that's about right. Um, all but 22,000 of them already have insurance. What we're going to be doing by ex if we expand Medicaid eligibility based on income from 66% of the federal poverty level up to 138 percent of the federal poverty level, we will find that, and, and all the studies show this, that we're going to be drawing people out of private insurance plans and putting them into um, what is a poverty health care program. Uh, why, it, do, why do you say that? Because it's income. You have to be poor. To no, no, I, I, I understand that, but you, you're under the impression that people want to be poor. Or they want to get I out of that. their insurance policies to no, get no, into no, this. No, we, we're not saying that at all. What we are saying is that people will, at that point, make the decision, I'm not going to spend my own money for my own insurance, even though 80 or 60% of it is paid, has to be 60, at least 60% paid by my employer. That's the federal law. Um, I'm going to abandon that because I can get something for free. I, I can get free health care insurance. And I can get it now because with a double the income well, eligibility. Well, it's not free, free. And so, so we, it's we not at, free, free. At, at this is, point, we have... Is, no, it's not free. It's not, no, there's no free Nothing's lunch. Nothing's free, but it, free. But it feels like free to the people that don't have to pay for it. Those who will pay for it are, are two, actually three sources. It'll start off that uh, we'll pay for it as federal taxpayers. We'll be paying for that million dollars a day. Uh, that's one way we pay for it. No, we'll no, be you're, paying you're, for not it you're not talking New Hampshire. You're talking, when you talk you, federal, we, you're talking United States. We do, but we, up here we in New Hampshire, we don't get it. We don't pay federal taxes We don't get here. the money. We don't pay federal taxes here in New Hampshire? Okay, so we pay federal taxes and the money is available, but we're not going to take the money? Uh, we, we, million we, dollars a day? Are, are we going to ask the federal government to borrow $2.5 billion over the next five years to put no, in place uh, a poverty program that will dwarf people out of taking care of themselves. And, and this is this, this is what you this say. Is the most I important don't agree with you. This, this is, is what this is what you say. You can look at you what say, happened in Maine, um, which when they expanded their income eligibility, um, this is exactly what happened. Now, even more important than that, even if you're someone sitting there saying, you know, I'd like the free benefit, you know, that's fine. And even if you're a health care provider that says, Give me the money. Show me the money. I don't care if you borrowed it from China. I don't care if the Federal Reserve is just making oh, come it up. On. You're, Give me the money. You're exaggerating. Even if you, that's, even if that's you're there. Not, that's you know, not you know fair. the worst that's part. You know fair. the worst part of this is that um, two studies show that Medicaid is worse than having no insurance at all. There's the University of wait, Virginia well, study. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Uh, this was going to be a topic. Now, you're telling me and the listeners, that people with Medicaid are less what? Are more, more likely, likely to die to in surgery die having, than having no insurance whatsoever. So what you're saying is 
it is better not to have insurance. If you're going into surgery, you have four possibilities as to how it's going to be paid for. One is you have private insurance. The, another is you have Medicare, the insurance for all the folks um, that they've earned. And, or you have no insurance, or you have Medicaid. Uh, if you go through that hierarchy, the worst is to have Medicaid. You're 13% more likely to die in surgery, according to a University of Virginia study of a million operations, surgical operations. You're 13% more likely to die in surgery than having no insurance. No, let me explain and the reason how many why. people would die without the operation? Again, this is percentage, so. Um, we, I want people to understand why this is, because it, counter, it seems counterintuitive. Oh, it is. And, and let me tell you why it is not counterintuitive. Because Medicaid pays only 40% of the cost of care to health care providers. You go into a hospital, you go to a doctor, you get 40%. I met a doctor um, Tuesday night. Um, I went over and spoke with a group in Wyndham. And this doctor, the surgeon, told me, you know, Bill, if I go in and I fix someone's jaw, just an you know, open reduction of a jaw, they have a broken jaw, we have to reset it, surgery, because it's an open reduction, um, I'll, I'll charge an insurance company $1,700 for that. I'll charge Medicaid that $1,700 for that. You know what they'll pay me for that? And, you know, and, and I asked you to guess, because my guess was, gee, they, they're really, I know they're really underfunded. 50%? Good. You know, I was even more pessimistic than you. I said, well, will they pay you like $500? $90. $90 pay. So, um, oh, no, no, no. Come on now. You, $90. No, no, no. no, no, no. They'll pay for that to, to, to Wait a minute. You're talking about putting a draw back and they only pay the doctor $90. That's what, he, that's what he told me. But this illustrates the but problem. That's, that's because let me, let me, let me. No, wait let, a minute. Let me but, explain. But are we you were, saying people have insurance and with Medicaid, they, they have a supplement policy no, no. that Medi pays Medica them? Medicaid is, is a standalone policy that's supposed to take care of most of their medical needs. So that is to illustrate how little that Medicaid pays of the overall cost. In New Hampshire, in most states, and you've heard this term before, we have the uncompensated care program. So hospitals will come to the state and said, you know, somebody showed up, they didn't have any care, we pro uh, insurance for the care we provided, we provided the care. Here's a bill, and we pay that bill, um, and we paid a substantial portion of that bill. We pay more for that uh, medical care the hospital provided in the uncompensated care program than they pay in Medicaid. Well, and that's nationwide. Yeah, that's why yeah, the University but, but, of Virginia but, but wait, but found it's minute. better not Excuse to have insurance. Me. So when Obama comes along and says everyone should be insured, won't our Instead of people walking with no insurance, if they go into an emergency room, they will have some sort of insurance? They will go, and, and Medicaid is traditionally covered somewhere between 3 and 5% of the population, depending what state you come from. You know, Mississippi, there's income eligibility, yep. would, would draw in more people. Uh, New Hampshire, more affluent states, not so much. Um, nationally, this is going to take it from the 3 to 5% up to 20%. One out of every five people will be on on a poverty program for health insurance, and they're going to get poverty results. So what do they, and, and what do they, they call it? Poverty, what do they call it in other countries? They they call it single payer, and, um, and for we, example, but we call it poverty in, in, over in, here. No, no, that's it's a different. That's that's a universal system. We're calling a poverty program, a welfare program for health insurance, a welfare program for health insurance. Um, yeah, the, the, the difference is, and the reason um, some of us are, are very, very loath to see the country move to a universal health care system is because you'll get the results that we see there. you get people coming down from Canada, as we say now, saying, I can't get my hip replacement. Um, I can't get it because I'm either too old, and they just say, you're too old for it, you know, go hobble around. Um, or they'll, they'll say, what you is, know. What does Canada have to do with us? Are, we, are, you, you, saying, are you under the impression no, that, no, you that, saying, that Canadian, just because they have that, our insurance ways are going to be that? Ken, you brought up what do they say in other countries. <laughs> That's why I'm, I'm giving you the example of another no, country. No, what do they call it? One, another country that has one of the best universal health care systems. Um, you know, e England has been there so, so long, it's really fallen apart. Um, others, such as Germany, which I'm aware of because I've, I've lived in Germany and all, have a mixed system of, of private and, and, uh, and, and uh, state insurance, um, somewhere like we do. Um, and, but, but that's 
the, the, even in the best system, you're going to find that health care is rationed and in times just not going to be available at all. Well, okay, now wait, you brought up a good point. You said that you talked to a doc. Now, first of all, you said people on Medicaid uh, who go in for operations have a 13 percent chance of dying? Uh, no, no. According to this study, the study. 13 universities of Virginia study looking at them, almost 1 million, 980,000 okay. operations um, just chosen. They factored out things like uh, health and wealth and age and all yeah. to make sure they're getting an even result. And the conclusion was 13 percent more likely to die than having no insurance at all. As it turns out, it's 97% more likely to die than having private insurance. You know, you know something, that, that's, so what you're saying is because people go in and, and they're on Medicaid and they go in for operations, there's a 13% chance of them, more of them dying didn't than if they didn't have it. Didn't have insurance. Okay, so what you're saying is that no insurance is better than some insurance. Uh, Ken, what would you say if you came across that? I mean, you, you, I, I know you don't want to. I, I don't know. I, I know you don't want to believe it. I, can't, I know you I don't want to believe, believe it. I can't but, believe that but, you guys use this as an example. That's that's. Well, I know. It's, how it's, bizarre! How how tough it so is to you, handle this. But you had a doctor but, who does who won't uh, did, did an operation seventeen hundred dollars. They're yeah. only going to pay him what ninety dollars. Now, me, is this the type of doctor who'll be operating on? Let me people? let me let me give you another example. Um, yeah, Oregon, about, I think it was four or five years ago, decided we have enough money to expand our income eligibility for Medicaid. Um, but we want to expand it all the way, and, we, and that's going to include about, I think it was 100,000 more people. But we only have the ability to cover 50,000. And so we're going to do it by a lottery system, just pure lottery, blind, you know, we're not going to. So, and so they did that. And some sociologists realized, that's a natural experiment that's taking place there. Um, and this is all written up, by the way, in the New England okay. Journal of Medicine. Yeah. And they said that's, an, that's a natural um, experience, a con controlled group that won't get insurance, that looks just like the group that is going to get Medicaid. And they said, well, let's look at what happens there. And this ought to be the proof, the proof that Medicaid is worth it um, or not worth it. And what they found is that even though these individuals cost the state, I think it was 60% more, a lot more money um, to take care of them than to take care of the control group that didn't get insurance through the un uncompensated care program. Are you trying to sell? So the, in the, other words, the outcomes, the health outcomes were no different, no different whatsoever. The mortality was the same. Um, everything was the same for those two groups But did one group go into an emergency room with no insurance at all? Doesn't this can, cost can, us? Can, Doesn't yeah, this cost yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you know, what I, you're doing is you're, you're saying, here, they have insurance, but it's well, they Medicaid, have Medicaid. They have Medicaid, and all of a sudden, they're going to die 13% more is, this than is, this those is, who don't have insurance. Too, this is the, the Oregon. That's what the Virginia study showed, that's dangerous to have Medicaid. Well, how about the people who don't get the operation? What's the Look, anybody can write these numbers down. What are the statistics of those who don't get the operation and die? A again, Ken, we're looking at surgeries and say, what's the best way for you to go into the operating room with no insurance or with Medicaid? And it came out it's better not to have any insurance. Now, the question you're asking would be one that's addressed by the, universe, uh, the Oregon, state of Oregon experiment, which is, says, what's better, to have nothing or to have Medicaid? And what they found is, bad for the state if you have Medicaid. It's going to be very expensive, 60% more money to take care of you. In terms of health outcomes, mortality, all heart attacks, all the things, it makes, at best, no difference. You know, you can, no difference. Okay, you can say anything you want um, oh. about insurance, but I'm wondering if there's anyone out there who truly believes. Now, like, your, your studies and statistics may be correct, but is there anyone out there who believes having no insurance is better than having Medicaid? The, uh, this, so uh, you have this, no insurance? This Oregon study was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. And there's a lot of very, very fine medical publications um, that are peer-reviewed. Usually, you know, it's like law reviews. I'm, all my articles were always published and non-peer-reviewed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of journals, because that, yeah. that always worked out best for me. But, but there's, there's, some, there's some law journals, there's some medical journals 
that are peer reviewed. And that means that they take them in, they look at them, they look at the results, they try to pull it apart, they try to show weaknesses, experts look at it. This article was published in um, the New England Journal of Medicine, which is about the most premier you know, medical journal that's peer reviewed in the country. And, and uh, therefore, I think we can look at it, and I know one of, the, one of your members of your caucus is a doctor, and I was talking uh, on a radio show, and he was there with me talking. He goes, well, you know, I'm a doctor, and we learn to use peer-reviewed stuff. No. And that, that's great. You know, I'm glad, you know, because you'll kill less people that way, doc. But, but um, nonetheless, this is peer-reviewed, and this, this is um, really, on that basis, um, well, well I, I, let, let me add another statistic to this. <clears throat> now, I, I'm going to agree with you. Anyone, uh, to a degree, I will agree with you. Uh, there was, uh, in, I think it was uh, California, uh, all the doctors in California went on strike. And the only operations that they would do were the operations that were necessary. If someone had an appendix, a burst appendix, or a heart, they would this do is that. California? California. Well, they did sort of plastic surgery in there, wouldn't they? Yeah, that's right. Had, only the necessary operations. Ab ab absolutely. But <laughs> what they found was during that period of time that they, the doctors weren't there, more people were alive. In other words, if they would have gone under the knife, there's more chances they would have died than not. Well, doesn't that so make sense? So statistically, you're correct to a point. More people are having operations. Well, I mean, that's, that's correct. I, going I, under, uh, people who have a heart problem, when they go under, they're put sure, under. I mean, sure. this happens. Sure. So, I mean, you could, you could draw it down to the individual level. I need a bypass. I need a quadruple bypass. And I'm going to die pretty soon. It could be, you know, the next minute. It could be six months from now. But yeah, I'm going to die yeah, yeah. Uh, if I don't get it done. Now... If I do get it done, I'm probably going to get many more years of life. But I said probably, because there's, there's a chance You're that my die. mortality is going to be drawn forward really quickly. I'm going to die on the operating table. That's correct. And, and so that's to be under, that so understood. So when you use that statistic, I can understand more people having operations certainly would die under the knife. But to say that people are better off not having any insurance compared to Medicaid uh, I'm, is, I'm, is I'm, say, I'm saying the Oregon study shows it makes no difference in terms of health care outcomes. So that addresses that issue. And indeed, if you go into surgery, the Virginia study shows, you better lie about having Medicaid. You might as well just say, I don't have any insurance. Because the, the uh, health care outcomes are, are a little bit so, better. So are you, you know why? Wait a minute. Are you telling me that doctors out there will not do as good of a job because they know they're getting paid I, I, less? I, you know, I'm not, you going to, I'm not going to impugn a whole profession. All I'm going to say is that's well, you the, are, but, that's the but, reality. No, but that's, statistically, that's what you're saying. No, I'm just repeating. Because the people have Medicaid, you're saying that they die more if they have it, and they live more if they don't have it. So you're saying that the doctors are not doing their jobs when they go in for operations? Ken, Ken um, just because I see an accident doesn't mean I approve of accidents. Um, all I'm saying is you can look at this. This is just factual. And you can d draw your own conclusion. The only conclusion I think is necessary is that Medicaid is not a great program to be under. And, and Obamacare is, is trying to achieve universal, they say, but increased coverage of uninsured in a, in a way by expanding a state program that is a very, very bad program. It's not achieving the result. That's one objection we have to it. Another objection we have to it is that um, once it comes in place, we know the federal government is going to eventually withdraw part of its support of it. It's even been suggested already during the sequester debate that um, by President Obama himself that they, in order to avoid some of the cutbacks under the sequester, that they would cut back some of the Medicaid reimbursement. So we know that that's probably going to happen. And then finally, and I really want, because because a lot of people are going to be sitting there going, you yeah, know, that's pretty darn academic, and I don't really care about it. I, I want to tell everyone who has private insurance themselves that this is going to impact their premiums. It's going to increase their premiums. Because think of one thing. You've heard me say it a number of times. Medicaid only pays 40% of the cost of their service. Well, you know, hospitals aren't going out of business. Doctors are making their money and everything. They have to get that other 60% somewhere else. And you know where they get it, Ken? 
They get it from private insurers. That's why in California and, and in other states, uh, they, are, they are already seeing double-digit increases in private insurance costs. Um, because, you know, a hospital is going to sit there and well, say, we will, we a hospital is going to sit there you, and say, Anthem, I want you, you, you got to make this up, but we won't you be able guys, to keep You guys were, the Republicans are so against it, so hateful about this, oh, that, can be, and no, that can, I can, don't know sometimes don't what to I mean, really. If, if, these are these are principled objections. I, know, I, I don't hate anybody. I, I, no, no, I, I don't no, hate, no, no. I, I don't I'm hate not talking program. about you. I know who oh, but, you are. But we, but we, we, we don't. work we, together. It, I mean, but, come on, Obamacare, Obama. They're, they're still arguing about the election. They're still fighting about that. People will not let it go. Get over it. Obama is going to be president for another four years. I'm, or three I'm and arguing and about years. Lyndon Johnson's election to the Senate in Texas. You know, we argue about elections on. By the way, I don't I, think I, I don't think you got elected. I'm reading a biography about Lyndon Johnson. Quite, you, you quite agree. fascinating. He, he didn't get elected then, did he? Uh, <laughs> <I'll>, <laughs> I, won't, I won't. I won't. No, that no. You you. It was pretty. Yes, it was pretty. But getting uh, pretty it, basically, it's about uh, him and getting the vice presidency. That was quite fascinating. Yeah. But but I you know, statistically, you are correct because I want to get back to this. No insurance is insurance. The simple fact of the matter is that more people will die if they go under the knife, no matter what. That's just the way it is. Some people cannot take being anesthetized. They just can't do it. Their lungs or, or there's parts of them, of course they're going to die. A person who doesn't have that may live longer. That's obvious. So statistically, I can see that. But to say that people live better or longer or or, or Longer, better, and longer without insurance is is. Uh, Ken, okay. again, the Oregon study shows okay. healthcare outcomes after um, the cost to the state of of uh, providing healthcare to this group goes up sixty percent is no different. Well, let's, no let's, different let us let us come down to New Hampshire because I have some some things here that it's because uh, uh, we've talked about. I I guess it would be Bradley, who's my favorite person running for what Senate. Uh, Senator Bradley? Yeah, Senator. Well, he no, no, he no, no, no. He's running for the U.S. He's going to go after Gene Shaheen, I believe. He's announced for nothing at this point. Yeah, what well, he has, what he has done, is put been part of a team that has put together an excellent budget for the people. Oh, the and boy, do I have to tell you about this excellent budget. He, they went in right uh, yesterday, and they did something. They, they, they gave a little. For, for Medicare, uh, okay, Medicaid. There's going to be a commission. There's going to be a commission, of course, uh, that's probably uh, down so as people won't have insurance. 58,000 won't have insurance for a period of time. Can. Longer. Can. can. They will. 22,000 who don't have insurance now but have all the coverage they need through uncompensated well, care this is the will have insurance. The, the other, the other uh, 33,000 so will come out of private insurance. The fa fascinating part of this is <clears throat> He was one of the individuals who went in there uh, as, a, as a state senator and negotiated this. Yeah, he was a majority leader of the House, uh, okay. Senate. Senate yeah. But now what he is going to do is he's not going to sign off on this because he doesn't want his name on that which he has negotiated. And now they've come up whereby uh, Bragnan, the president of the Senate, and one other individual will be signing off for two and, and Bradley is one of them who negotiated. So it's going to look like he didn't negotiate it, but he did. Because they Can are it, running for a political so, office, is, and they do not want to use this as people use it against them that they voted for. Ken, isn't this a little bit in, inside baseball? I, I mean, I'm, I don't know. Is he, there's well, a, did you? I, I don't think most people know, know quite frankly, what you're referencing. Committee of Conference reports. Um, there's a huge budget. You know, the House Bill 1, House Bill 2 the, is the budget. House Bill 1 has all the... Figures, it's you know spreadsheets. House Bill Two with all the changes in statutes. No, I no no. And, and you know you can have something like that. And for mm -hmm. for um, no, uh, we, uh, we, Senator Bradley to uh, no, say I, you know I, I, I think I don't like some of the stuff in there. Why don't you have somebody else sign off? Well, no. I mean uh, the t the two of the senators uh, who uh, negotiated the compromise and it was Bill One Forty Eight are considering seeking higher office. Two thousand fourteen. It's not that's not the budget. House Bill One Forty Eight. Um. Uh, the, oh, you, is no, that, it's not the budget. It's it's. Um, is that the Medicaid expansion? Yes, it is. Yes, it, oh, Medicaid no, expansion. No, it's it's not Medicaid expansion. I apologize. It's the um, 
health insurance exchange bill. And what they're doing is agreeing to change some portions of New Hampshire law to avoid community rating under um, Obamacare. Federal statute okay. would default but, to community rating. But Bradley rating. was so kind of inside against this, but negotiated. So I, I, want, you know, I want people to see this. So what he did is he went uh, before the president of the Senate and said, will you sign off on it? In other words, I will not vote for it, but will yeah. you sign on it? You know and I they said yes. Yeah. So in other words, there are two people running for political office who negotiated this, but yet won't stand up and take You, you know what we have it. to be real careful not to do? But is we always talk about how we have to find um, bipartisan solutions and we have to compromise. And we want um, Washington to work, we want Concord to work. And when you have someone like uh, Senator Bradley who comes forward and uh, reaches a good compromise as a responsible legislator and says, you know what, I, I'm not really, this isn't an area that I can really approve of, but I can see how this is a compromise that will pass in the legislature. It's not a bad compromise. But I, not what I want. But I want on but my no record, because I negotiated, but well, what I want on my record putting, is I'm not voting for you're, it. You're putting words in his mouth. I think he's I acting. I don't. It's I, right here. I think he's acting like a responsible legislative Having somebody leadership. Else, somebody else? Because no. he, he doesn't want it on his record he's, that he does this, so he wants the president of the Senate. From, from what you say, you know, again, I haven't read that. I haven't talked to Senator Bradley. Um, I don't, Odell I, I, and uh, Bradley, both are running for political office. Both of them have asked, and both of them have, uh, Sanborn, excuse me, is, is signing, the, will sign the agreement, and also Bragdon. We'll take uh, Odell out, and we'll take Bradley out of the, out of the picture. In other words, well, these can vote against it, but because these two will vote take their place, it will pass. I, so I, I don't know what conclusion you're drawing. Um, no one has spoken of Senator Odell as running for any other office in the future than the one he holds. And um, that's not a district that is, he's ever under any stress in getting reelected to. So I don't think he's doing any, anything nefarious there. Um, I remember as Speaker, I'd have to substitute people out of um, committee of conference um, sign offs because, you know, they'd go to Las Vegas or something. They're just not around, you know. Yeah. You'd have to. I, yeah. I don't, so if they're, no, 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 if they're I, not I, there, I, we can I, only speculate. I understand that, but, but that is, you see, the problem is over the last, I'm in commerce, the problem is is that, it, and I'm sure Bradley's a wonderful guy. I mean, I looked up his bio and he's a hard worker. I mean, you know, come on. Mm -hmm. But he's also a politician. Uh, and as a politician last week, I sat there and listened to him, and I turned to the person next to me and said, don't you wish we could record this? And she turned to me and said, I don't know what he's talking about. And, we're, and she is a, she's an individual who studies exactly what was taking place, and I was sitting there, and I have some knowledge of what's going on, and this guy it just went on and on and on, and I'm going, what is he talking about? And then I learn that he negotiates this, but he doesn't want to be involved with this. So he's having other people. So anyway, These okay. are really impossible criticisms yeah. to respond to. You say, I don't know what he's talking about, and you don't tell me any words that he used. And what, it, what the subject oh, matter is I, or what the I context really, well, is. That's, a good, that's, well, that's an excellent point. That's all a, I'm saying and is, I'm a fool for saying it. Okay? All, all I'm, all I'm, yeah, all I know that was wrong of me. All I'm saying is, you know, I, I, I know Senator Bradley is a very responsible legislative leader. Um, really, really quite a talented person as well, and a very gracious person, a very nice person. And, you know, if he didn't sign off in a committee of conference report, there are many, many reasons why that uh, doesn't happen. Running for a political and, office, and, and, and that's what it and, says. And, no, and certainly, <clears throat> and who, who wrote that? Kevin Landrigan. Um, or oh, something wrong with Kevin no, Landrigan. No, no, but what I'm, what I'm saying is that Papers like controversy, and sometimes there's no controversy, and they'll invent controversy. I can remember, let, let me give you an example of this. Um, I went to, I'm a lawyer, so I have to go to continuing legal education. Yeah. So I went to a continuing legal education course up at University of New Hampshire Law School. It was one of these one-day things. It got out at 4.30. The last presentation was by members of the Supreme Court on you know, changes in the law, so that sort of thing and uh, got up 4.30 in Concord, and I had to be at 5.30 in Laconia to get on the Mount Washington, um, which was going to leave the port then on a fundraising thing. And so I'm sitting there, and, and gets out a little bit late, and so I kind of rush out the door, get my car so I can drive up there, and in the next morning, in the Nashville Telegraph, 
it talked about how the speaker had rushed out without talking to the judges, and he must be irritated at the judges, and just made up this whole story, as such as we're seeing yeah, here. But no, no, that, what, no, what it was, if I could, if I could, jump, was, if I could boat, jump off my the, seat, the boat and get is taken leaving. Off. The boat, the boat is leaving. No. I had to get, I had to get up there. The, what I'm trying, I, I tell you that story to illustrate that people will look at at, at events and really and substantially misinterpret them based often on a desire for controversy when none exists. Well, I think, I, think that's, I think you're very good to say that. I think that's a very, very political, I think it's correct. But what I say is this, we know that he and uh, Sambon negotiated this, mm -hmm. all right? We know they negotiated it. They said they negotiated it. Let's see how they vote on it. If they vote sure. against that which they negotiated on, but it passes because they have two other people who will vote for it, then what does that mean? That, Politically, it's not good for them to you, 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 sign. You know, you know what it means? When I was Speaker, for example, a gambling bill came forward, and it was not one that I was terribly comfortable with, but it's one that people had worked on very, very yeah, hard, yeah. and I wanted to make sure that it got a fair hearing. I didn't think that I should be laying my thumb on the side of the scale, and, and so I let it go forward. Now, people could be saying the same thing about me. Oh, you know, he wanted to be for gambling, before he was against gambling, all that. At times, it's nothing more than being a responsible legislative leader and allowing a debate to develop. Now, it could be on this that he, he saw that that was a reasonable compromise, not one he personally supports, but one that should be presented to the legislature. I don't know. We can only speculate. Okay, we, we, we will. But, but let, us, let us change the subject a little. Uh, in fact, you brought up gaming. It's going to come back. Uh, personally, I think uh, it should have been differently. I think one license is not enough. They probably should have had three. They probably, at least, uh, with the legislature having the opportunity to add more. I think that everything should have gone into the general fund and then taken out. I think everybody was counting the money before it came in, and all of a sudden, you get to a point where you're arguing about something that's never going to happen. And all of a sudden, people just get discouraged about it. I think we lost a great opportunity. I don't like the way it, it was set up, but still you could have got something and then, as you know, sometimes it's good to get something on the books and then amend it up. There's nothing wrong with that. Your opinion, gaming. I, I, I was very concerned with the way that particular bill would work. I was concerned that it was being used to uh, drive to get money for bigger government. I was concerned with the revenue estimates. I was concerned with the unfairness of um, only having one venue and, and pretty much uh, structuring a whole piece of legislation for one company, or so it seemed. And so on a number of different levels, I was very uncomfortable with it. In, in concept, I'm, I'm not dead set against. Um, are you for ga gaming? I, uh, Personally, no, I don't like to gamble. Hey, I don't either, but are you, um, would I'm, you I'm, have gaming come into the state? It, it, you know, we have it here. We have the lottery. Well, no, I know that, but, some, but I'm talking casino, casinos. Are you... Are you, you, you know, I'm not, it's, is it a real important issue to me? No, it's, as, as... Well, it's um, hundreds as of millions of dollars a year and at least 500 jobs. I no, mean, New Jersey's bailing out its latest casino. Did you know that? Pardon me? The state of New Jersey is being asked to build, uh, bail out one of the, its latest casino. You know, it's, it's, it's if, unfortunately an industry that's almost played itself out. It's one thing if, you know, 30 years ago, if you're um, New Jersey and you're looking and say, there's no casinos in the country except out in Las Vegas, you say, let's put some up here, it's good money. Or you're Connecticut, and you can say there's no casinos. But, but, in, but you're but, not, but, but but you're we not have saying we have if we have something here that that's going to happen. I mean, you're using, you're using I'm, New I'm Jersey and not using I'm, New Hampshire. Well, what I'm trying to illustrate is that it's an industry that's played itself out in terms of substantial revenue gains for states. Um, you know, I think it would have been a, a uh, casino built on the cheap, 
compared to oh come on compared to six hundred million dollars not built on the well, first of all that includes land acquisition so costs that have already know, been expended already been expended that. one no, that that includes not. um highway infrastructure costs a half a it wasn't bill, okay a half a billion dollars that so isn't it's more, enough money it's more like a three hundred million dollar um venue and we'd already uh. had we'd already had another issue which really concerns me which is we'd already had difficulties in the legislature because of efforts to protect other businesses against the casino. I think, I think casinos could really end up corrupting the legislature. Oh, I don't. Oh, oh come on. Yeah, and I love when I hear people, yeah, it's going to corrupt. Of course, it, it won't corrupt you, will it? Casinos, if they're here? I'm going to be in Congress. Will it corrupt you? I'm going to be in Congress. You're going to Congress. It won't corrupt me. <laughs> It won't well, corrupt you just the, said you the people. I, the you people said you I know. Money to gain. <laughs> no, no, I don't gain, but I, it's not going to corrupt me. It will not corrupt all the people. But why is it that politicians always say it's going to corrupt the other politician, and of course it will not? Why? 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 Is that just a nature? You, you, type wanna, of? you know, I don't know what reason why I'm I, concerned. My my brother represented um, the head of Wimley Corporation, which runs R Wimbledon and also owns Lincoln Downs. Who was charged with a conspiracy to bribe the Speaker of the House, uh, Rhode Island House of Representatives, and um, they, so they, what does that got and, to and do? So, so that that shows what in, link, in in order to get more slot dates, the slot machine dates, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. They call yeah, I understand. It. And and um, now I I listened but to you were I listened the Speaker to, of the House. I listened, Would you I listened to my, I listened to my. Um, brother, and I know this man was innocent, but I don't want those type of cases to have to be tried here. Um, and you, and you want to know what? Um, w w each of us sincerely think, and we ha that we are, I, I think most of us should in the legislature, that we are honest people. Um, I we are. I, I, certainly, we are. I certainly define myself as an honest person, and I would be very... I may not like your politics, but, but you're but absolutely I would, But honest. I would be very disappointed in myself. It's just a moral thing. But... But you know, there, there are people in the world um, who might not be honest, maybe 50 years from now in New Hampshire, maybe 100 years, maybe next year. I don't know. And, and, Why? So, I, and uh, so we don't uh, need, we, we've already seen the type of pressure that can be brought on the legislature. So what are just you to saying? We, you do not want gaming and coming to New I, Hampshire? I, I think we have to tread carefully. You know, okay. and, and, and I'm sort of like the members, uh, the people in my Politically, district. Politically, is this not going to, are you, I, I'm, are I'm you like, not I, I'm wanting like, to say you are? Are I, you not? I'm like people in my district. It's, it's not a, a, an important issue. It's an issue we have concern with. If it could be well-structured, you know, I'm sure we'd say as a libertarian-oriented state. If are you a libertarian? It, I, I'm a Republican. I'm a if I had to define myself in a turn, I'd say I'm a constitutional Republican. Okay. But um, okay. certainly, as someone who is kind of in the mainstream of of uh, Republican Party in New Hampshire, which is has libertarian overtones, um, I'm, I'm willing to let people be treated like adults, and I don't want to have uh, to tell them, "Don't gamble." On the other hand, I don't want uh, the externalities um, of gambling to diminish the quality of my life and the life of my, oh, well, my I don't, neighbors. Uh, uh, I think that's. When one says that, I'll write, I don't want life to be bad, so what this means, we, I don't want worse uh, in gaming, might do that. Well, okay. Let's go to another subject. Snowden. You're not going to believe this. Now, my son is in China. We did talk about yeah, this. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Snowden. Tell our listeners, our watches, who is Snowden. Well, Ed, his name's Ed Snowden. Um, he was a contractor for a firm that, or consultant to a firm that was doing contracting for the National Security Agency, NSA, um, took some information, we don't know quite exactly what, what it is, ran, yeah. ran off yeah. to Hong Kong, yeah. hooked up with the Guardian newspaper, gave an interview, um, has given more interviews to a mainland Chinese paper that seems to be geared towards embarrassing the ah, United States. Oh, well, let me, let and, me. And basically has decided to be um, uh, the conscience <clears throat> of the country when it comes to um, surveillance. You know, he's told us some, some important things. Some of it was already known, but as an individual, it's clear that he's trying to embarrass the country. When, when, when um, uh, Putin when, says, when, "Come to our country," we well, no, I was going to say when know, President it. Obama, for example, was meeting with the Chinese um, president or whatever, it can be very the, the chief executive. 
Um, he was coming out and saying, well, you know, they hacked Chinese computers. He shouldn't embarrass our president that way. If he has a problem, I know. He, he, should, he should go to um, uh, people who would care deeply about this problem. Well, you want to hear something? I talked to my son on Skype, which is a wonderful device. Yeah, is, I mean, yeah. it's really incredible. Yeah, we, had, we had a daughter in, in El Salvador for four years. And boy, it's unbelievable. Yeah. It's, I guess uh, Microsoft bought it, so I don't know. And I don't know how they make money. Uh, you know, it's just it's just internet access, like everything else. And you're right. I don't. Well, they have a premium service um, that allows you to do conferences. And so oh, forth. oh, okay, and sure. So I think it's like sure. a lot of the, of, of those uh, internet models. We give you a little bit of functionality, okay. and then we try to trade you up to a subscription. Well, it's really really quite fascinating. And I said to them, I said, "Well, what are they saying in China about Snowden?" They said, "They don't even know about it." Yeah. yeah. I says, "What do you mean? They don't know about it?" So they don't even know about it. Absolutely don't even know about it. I says, Hong Kong. Right. He says, well, it's not much be really being said in Hong Kong either. I said, are you trying to tell me, he's, other than him finding out through other you know, sources, uh, he says, uh, no. He said, but you know what the big deal is? The Chinese president or premier comes to the United States, and he brings his wife. I heard about this. Did you hear about this? Yeah. And culture is simply is for them when you bring your wife the president's wife really is the hostess of the the country and she wasn't around and, and i gather from you know i read about this in the economist magazine and i gather that it was especially considered an insult because this new prime minister or president yeah. um has a, a wife who is Sort of a high-profile figure. It's not. Yes. And, and, yes. and there was a, a a real anticipation on the part of the Chinese people and the Chinese government. Both these that, women getting together. Yeah, they're getting together. You know, supposedly two glamorous women and, and all that. And, and they, she is glamorous. This um, is this is something new for the Chinese. Yeah, it really and, is. And so it was, yeah. it was, you know, very surprising. You know, you know what it reminded me of? If if um, when Obama became president, he gave back. Um, that bust of Winston Churchill to the um, uh, British Embassy. And that's something they've been presented to the United States. It was in President Bush's office. But it was a, it was a you know, bust of, of Winston Churchill. And it was just um, unnecessarily rude. Um, it really well, was. you know, it's a, I, I, I this is, this is, I, remember, I, I, remember Winston gonna, Churchill's an American yeah, citizen. I, I understand. He's the only yes. honor, honor, I think he's the only honor, No, Lafayette was made an honorary American yes. citizen. So I think he's only one of two in our history. And, you know, to have done that, you know, it's... And, and so well, I, 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 I don't... The, the bus thing is, I, I, to me, is quite small. Uh, but culture, as my son is very sensitive, obviously, of the Chinese culture, he said, Dad, he said, they really took this serious. Well, this was did. a big deal over there. But Snowden was nothing. Well, nothing. you know, I, I think Snowden is, is more something that we, is important as we understand ourselves and, and how we're relating to this government, what we're finding out in, in terms of its surveillance of us and everything. You know, and, and he, he has aspects of him of being a whistleblower that I think are valuable, but to have gone to a foreign country to blow your whistle, to, to disclose it, and then to start, to, 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 to start disclosing information in the context that will embarrass the U.S. Okay, it's, I'm, it's really I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do it first. My name is Ken Gidge. You can get me at uh, Gidge World, which is an art website. Uh, you can get me uh, on uh, my email address is kgidge at aol.com, telephone number. 603-864-9332, and... William O'Brien, and uh, you can see a picture of me at O'BrienForCongress.com, and eventually you'll see content on that website, and you can always call me at 673-6610. Um, Thanks. Yeah, thank and you, thank you very much. Good discussion. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.